Hello everyone and welcome to my very first baking demonstration on my channel. Hopefully it won't be the last. If it's the first and last, this is going to be the most expensive coffee walnut cake in existence because apart from all the ingredients I had to buy, I had to buy a couple of sandwich tins and also had to fork out on a new Kenwood chef. So if this little project doesn't work out, then uh, I'll throw the dummy out of the pram, is that the expression? And I'll go back to buying all my cakes from M&S. But I'm going to give it a go. And I'm not, I've not practiced. This truly is the first cake I've made in over 30 years, I expect. But surely it can't be that difficult. Baking is just about following the recipe, measuring the ingredients, and baking at the correct temperature. Is it? Well, I hope so. So today's recipe is coming from this, the Biro book, the Biro Home Baked Recipes 41st edition. Now, my mum has some of the older Biro books and she made many treats for us as children. And I'm sure some of you watching will know what the Biro book is. If you want to get the latest, which is the 41st edition, I think that's the latest one, don't go and pay prices that uh, eBay sellers are charging because this book is only 2 99 plus postage. And um, yes, £4.64 this cost me with the postage. And it has um, some classic recipes in here that my mum has made for years. So turning to page 50, this is what I'm hoping the cake will look like at the end. This is a coffee walnut cake with coffee buttercream icing and walnut halves for decoration. So let's first of all, first thing we need to do is get our shopping list. So we need to buy all the ingredients. I've bought them all. So I'll show you what we need to make this coffee and walnut cake. So let me take me through the ingredients you'll need if you want to follow on with this video and make this delicious coffee walnut cake yourself. So the first ingredient is one tablespoon of instant coffee. And you'll need a tablespoon of hot water. I'll show you that later. Then you also need 175 grams or six ounces of self-raising flour. Now it says Biro self-raising flour because Biro is a flour brand. But of course, any self-raising flour will do. It doesn't have to be Biro, although hopefully the, the cake will turn out fine with Marks and Spencer flour. I'm sure it'll be just the same. You'll also need one and a half level teaspoons of baking powder, six ounces or 175 grams of caster sugar, six ounces or 175 grams of soft margarine or butter, three large eggs beaten, and 75 grams or three ounces of walnuts finely chopped. You also need some half walnuts, half walnuts for your decoration. And we need to make the buttercream as well. And I'll show you that, of course, in the video. For the buttercream, you will need icing sugar and butter and uh, some of the coffee essence mix to turn it into coffee flavored buttercream. Okay, I've been putting this off for too long. Let's get started. The first thing I need to do, but I'm not going to do it yet, in, but you, you start, if you're, if you're used to cooking, then you'll turn the oven on and preheat it. But I'm going to preheat the oven when I'm halfway through doing this because I don't want the oven on for a long time. I might be ages with my first cake in many, many years. So, but if you want to do it first, you have to preheat your oven to fan 160 or a conventional electric oven is 180, gas mark four. I am going to grease and line the base of two 18 centimeter or seven inch sandwich tins with baking parchment. And hopefully I've got some baking parchment. So let's get these greased and lined. Again, it's a long time since I've greased and lined anything, but I do remember you have to draw a circle around your tin. There's one. Now oh, this is going to fit two nicely. So baking parchment or silicon paper, I think it's called. 
There you go. So that's two perfect circles. Not sure if you can see them. I can see them anyway. So I just need to cut those out. I've cut out the baking parchment and I've got some melted butter here. You can use melted butter or oil, but I'm trying to eliminate seed oils from my diet. So back to the old fashioned butter. And I just melted a little bit of butter in the microwave for about 30 seconds. So I'm just going to, using this pastry brush, apply the melted butter to the base of the pan and of course around the edges. Pop the baking parchment inside. That's about right. And then I believe, I think I, I think you also grease the top of the baking parchment as well so it doesn't stick to the cake. So it'll be easy to peel off when the cake is baked. So there we go. That's one cake tin greased and lined. I'll do the other one and then start making the cake. So I need one tablespoon of instant coffee. And then you dissolve that with one tablespoon of hot water. There we go. That should dissolve completely. We don't want any bits of coffee granules left. Okay, so that's the flavoring for the cake. I've got my newly acquired sieve out because I'm going to need it shortly. And I'm also going to need, for the very first time, my new Kenwood. So I'm going to use the glass bowl to sift the ingredients into because it says sift them into a large bowl. And this is a large bowl. I'll need to put that on the scales though because we need to measure out the ingredients. Okay, so I need six ounces or 175 grams. So I'm doing it in grams. So 175 grams of the self-raising flour. I don't want to go over. I want to make this as accurate as I can. 175 coming up. There we go. Now I need to add one and a half level teaspoons of baking powder. That's one. And a half. Now I need to sift that into the mixing bowl. There we go. And sifting adds to the air. Yes, I've been watching Fanny and Delia. There we go. I need to add all the other ingredients now. So this is an all-in-one cake mix. It's not the creaming method. So an all-in-one is good for beginners because you just shove it all in and mix it up. So I need the fat, which I'm using butter. And what did we say? 175 grams of soft margarine or butter. No idea. I'm going to add it in bits. I think I'll have to cut this up a bit. We'll get 175 grams in. And then I'll use a knife just to make these pieces a bit smaller. That I know. I think you have to do that. Crikey, 175 grams is quite a lot of butter. Bang goes the diet, folks. Only up to 106 and over half a packet of butter used up. Get in there. Crikey, 130. Right, nearly there. 172, uh, 175, that'll do. Just going to cut up the butter. It's softening up a bit. It's, it's been out of the fridge 
20 minutes or so. So I think the butter should be soft, not rock hard. But I'm using an electric machine, so it should be able to blend this in with no trouble. But yes, just um, cutting it up into smaller pieces to add to the flour and baking powder mix. That looks about fine to me. So I'll just pop that in the mixer bowl. In it goes. Now I need to add six ounces or 175 grams of caster sugar. So it's 175 sugar, flour and butter. 175, come on. Nearly there. Three, four, that's it, 175. I'll add that to the mixer bowl. A coffee and walnut cake wouldn't be complete without walnuts, so I need three ounces or 75 grams of walnuts to go in the mix. So let's uh, turn my scale on again. Zero it. So it's 75 grams of walnuts. It's quite a lot of walnuts here. A bit too many. I don't suppose the odd few grams will make any difference, but I want to do this properly. There we go, 75 grams. I need to chop these finer than they are now. You could put these in a food processor. I do have one, but I'm not messing up a food processor for this. I'm just going to get a knife and a chopping board and chop these up into fine pieces. There we go, I think that's fine enough. So now all I have to do is add this to the mixing bowl. In this bowl I've got the three large eggs. I'm just going to beat them together with a fork. No need to get out my hand mixer for this quick job. There we are. I think they're beaten up together. And to that actually, before I pour the egg mix into the bowl, I'm going to add the coffee, which I think is cooled enough. Add that in. Right, that is everything, folks. The moment of truth when I turn on my mixer for the first time after I've added the liquid ingredients. Okay, here goes. Not really sure what setting to put it on, but I'll start off in a slower speed and then work my way up a bit once it's combined. I think that's enough, <laughs> I think. Right, well, it looks like cake mix. I think this is what they call the dropping consistency. I'm not sure, it might look a bit, it looks, I don't know if it's, it looks a bit dry to me, I don't know. I'm just gonna, yeah. I'm just going to uh, taste a little bit of it. Mm. Oh. It's years, it's years since I've had cake mix from the bowl. Right, let's just take off the beater. You don't want to waste any of this mixture because somehow now I've got to work out how to divide it evenly into the bowls. Uh, sorry, not the bowls, the, um, the cake tins, which is going to be fun. Right, there's some left on there, but I'll lick that later. So that's one big dollop for that tin. And one big dollop, slightly bigger dollop I feel, for that one. So I think this tin needs a little bit more. 
and then maybe half a dollop a bit more for that one what I'll do before I add the rest I'll just flatten it down well certainly if the uh, raw cake mix is anything to go by that certainly tasted how I expected it to taste nice coffee flavor and I think I've got a bit of walnut as well but I'm, I don't know if this seems a little bit uh, there's definitely more mix in this one so I think the rest of the mix in the bowl will be going possibly in the other one by the time I've put this in hopefully the temperature of the oven will be correct yeah I think I need a bit more a bit more mix in this one perhaps crikey this is taking me back folks now I realize why I just buy all my stuff from a supermarket <laughs> It is easier, isn't it? It's easier to buy all your cakes and biscuits ready-made, but there's something I think pleasurable about creating your own. And I'm sure it's going to taste a lot nicer than a factory produced cake that's got E numbers and preservatives and all sorts in. Um, I have a feeling this looks, I don't know, we'll see how it, how it bakes, but this seems a little bit dry, this mix. Perhaps the eggs weren't large. Perhaps they were, it doesn't say, I think it's a mixed, mixed sizes. One of the eggs did look a bit smaller. I tried to use all larger eggs. Anyway, I think that's the best I can do. I think that's roughly even. So as long as my oven has reached the correct temperature, I'm going to pop it in and uh, hope for the best. The oven has reached temperature, which is 160 for fan oven or 180 for conventional electric or gas mark four. And we need to bake them now for 25 to 30 minutes until well risen, golden and firm to the touch. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to put them on a baking tray or directly on the oven shelf. I'm just gonna put them directly on the oven shelf in the middle. Set the timer and uh, hope for the best. I think I'll set it for 25 minutes and then take a look. Okie dokie, I'm going to have a look now at my creation. Mm. Do you know what folks, I'm just going to leave those in for a few more minutes. Okay, well I'm just going to go for it now. Well, I'm hoping that they're done. Well, what do you think, folks? I mean, looks a bit like a cake and they've risen quite well. And they've uh, come away from the sides, so I should have no trouble getting these out of the tins. But the recipe says just leave it about five minutes and then you need to transfer them from the tin onto a cooling rack. And obviously once they're face down on the cooling rack I need to peel off the baking parchment okay I think it's about time I bit the bullet and turned these cakes out now I don't need my oven gloves now or do I yeah I think I might still need them that's going to be very awkward isn't it oh well there we go that was a com <laughs> complete fail don't you fall out of that tin oh you well, it's a good job I've just wiped that surface. Oh, it was, it was going so well, wasn't it? Absolutely. I think the tins are cool enough for me to handle. I'll put that one to one side. I don't have matching cooling racks. In fact, I don't think these cooling racks have been used since we moved here. 
maybe once. Oh, that was better, wasn't it? Oh, that's come off very easily. Oh, that, it, I'm sorry, but that looks, that, that, that looks like a cake. I can't believe it. it looks like a cake. So that's one to cool down. Here's the other one. You can see bits, still bits of walnut in that. Mm. I'm not sure, and it feels a little bit too moist, but we'll see. I don't think for a first attempt in many, many years of making a cake, I don't think they're bad at all. Um, that one's better than this one. Probably a bit less mixture, but once they're sandwiched together, coffee buttercream on the inside, coffee buttercream on the top and walnut halves, I think that will go very well with a nice cup of coffee. So I'm going to leave these to cool down, properly cool, and then I'm going to make up the buttercream icing. The cakes are cooling, so I'm going to make the buttercream icing, which is a separate entry in the B-Row book. So we need to turn to the icing page. Here's the icings and fillings page. So for this recipe, we need 50 grams or two ounces of butter, 110 grams or four ounces of icing sugar sieved, and two teaspoons of hot water. For the coffee flavouring, we need to add one teaspoon of coffee to the hot water, which I've done. So that's my coffee flavouring ready. And I've already weighed out the butter into this bowl. So I just need to weigh out the icing sugar now. The 110 grams of icing sugar needs to be sieved. So I'm going to attempt to sieve it into the bowl because you need to add the icing sugar gradually to the butter. So it's going to make a mess. Icing sugar always goes everywhere, doesn't it? So 110 grams. That's four ounces. I can taste it. <laughs> I can taste it in my mouth already. Put that down. Sorry about that, folks. Oop. Did I say 110? Yes, I did. I've just gone slightly over. I'm 114, but I don't think we'll argue over that. So first thing to do is to add the butter, which by now is quite soft because it's been out of the fridge and it doesn't want to leave the spoon. Into the mixing bowl with the butter. So now I need to start beating the butter with the mixer and then slowly adding the icing sugar as it's mixing. So I can add the icing sugar down this little chute and also of course we've got to add the coffee flavouring. Not sure if a spoon will be the right thing to use but we'll give it a go. Start off on a slow speed. I've made a schoolboy error, folks. When I saw this buttercream, I thought that doesn't seem enough to sandwich in between the cakes and to top it, and it isn't. The quantity there is enough to sandwich in the middle of the cakes. But if you want the buttercream topping as per the recipe, I should have doubled what I put in. So I'm gonna to have to make another batch of buttercream icing exactly the same way I made this one in order to have enough to top the cake because it needs to look like the picture in the B-Row book. Yeah, this second batch isn't as successful as the first. I had to sort of mix my butters. So it's not the same. So I thought, well, I'll put this one and I can see little bits of, little bits of butter still left, but oh, it's going inside. Shh, don't tell anyone. Oh, where's my palette? I've got a palette knife as well. 
might be of use. Left some of the mix on the beater and some's fallen at the bottom there. Oh, it'll be okay. Crikey folks, this is my very first attempt at making a cake. Really? I can't remember actually the last time I made one. It must have been when I was at school in home economics class. I've actually got an O level in it, you know. Yes, I have an O level in home economics because I carried on and did it. All the boys, yeah, there's bits of bits of butter still in that, but never mind. All the boys had to do home economics back in the day, and then when they reached a certain year of school, they could choose their options. Need to go a bit more towards the edge there. It'll probably all ooze out a bit when I put the top on. Right. Yeah, I chose to continue to do it because I enjoyed it. But mainly because I enjoyed using the twin tub washing machine to wash the tea towels after the lesson had finished. Okay, so let's put the top on. Yeah, I think that's a bit, I think I've overcooked. I think I've overbaked. Paul Hollywood would be saying to me, that's been in the oven too long. I th yeah, I should have taken it out when I thought it was still a bit springy, but well, I'm still fairly happy with it so far. Just need to put the topping on now. Well, considering, I say, I, I said it again, I think it's not bad, but I haven't cut into it yet and I'm not going to have a piece. I haven't had any dinner yet or lunch, so I'm having a slice of this for my dessert. Still doesn't seem, well, it doesn't look quite like the picture. There was certainly a lot more buttercream. I've had to buy myself a box to put a cake in as well because I don't have, or didn't have, a cake box. So, um, I think it's a bit overcooked. So next time, I'm gonna take it out a couple of minutes before, and I won't be filming the next one I make anyway. So, this has taken a lot longer, obviously, because I've filmed all this. And I've had to stop and adjust the camera. So my full focus hasn't been on the cake. It's been on the cake and filming. Anyway, I think that'll do. All I've got to do to finish off my coffee walnut cake is to put some walnut halves on the top. Not sure how many I'm supposed to put on, but um, we'll see. Maybe a few more than that. One in the middle. Trying to find the halves from this packet. A lot of the halves are quarters now. Deary me. I mean, if I wasn't bothered about the video, I would just be putting any old bits on this. It doesn't matter, but, you know, it's my first cake. I want it to look pretty. That'll do. Well, there you go, folks. That's my first ever coffee and walnut cake. I'm going to pop it in the storage box and at the end of the video I'll cut myself a slice and we'll have a look at it inside and I'll give you the taste test. It's now a bit later in the day. I've had my dinner or lunch rather late and now it's time for my pudding. So I'm going to cut my cake. I don't know how. Um, <laughs> yes. It's, it's overcooked, folks. I won't lie to you. On the outside, it's uh, a bit crisp. I don't think this cake slice is very sharp. Yes, it's, there's a bit of a, a crunchiness. But there you go. Yes. I don't think it's bad for a first attempt, do you? That's my coffee and walnut cake. I'll just go and get one of my 
newly acquired pastry forks and try a piece. <coughs> yes, I should have taken it out. Mmm. Fortunately, the buttercream compensates for the dryness. Mmm. Mmm. That's better than any cake you can buy at M&S. I can tell you that now. So, for first attempt, yes, probably take it out of the oven three or four minutes before. It was slightly undercooked when I tried it and then I left it in too long. Just another two minutes or a minute would have been enough, but it might uh, soften up. It's not bad. It's holding, it's holding together, sort of. But yes, it's not, you have to eat it with a pastry fork, definitely. Mm. But all in all, I think that's very nice for a first attempt. So I hope you enjoyed watching me bake this cake for the very first time. And um, because this was successful, I'm going to make some other things on my channel. I think we might try some biscuits next. And I, I do want to have a stab at a Bakewell tart as well. So who knows, I could be on the Bake Off 2030 if I play my cards right. So thank you for watching, thumb up the video if you liked it, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon for another video. Bye for now.